Hey YouTube, in this video I'm going to go through many, many of my top picks as far as all different categories of knives. Uh, everyday carry folder, tactical folder, hard use folder, larger folders, even um, favorite tomahawks, you know, best machetes in different categories, uh, fixed blades even Karambit, all different, my, my top picks, all in one video. All right, and the first category is going to be um, a good everyday carry knife, uh, a little bit over $100, all right? And this is the Enzo Burke 75, Scandi Grinds D2 Blade Carbon Fiber Handle Scales. I've reviewed it, but it's a new knife, but I really think this would be an excellent everyday carry. A three inch blade, very handy, it's light, uh, the price is really good for what you get. So that is uh, just one of my picks for a great everyday carry folding knife. Uh, but I do want to give you some options, so here is a 3.5 inch EDC folding option. Spyderco Cali 3.5, this is the one with carbon fiber handle scales and a laminate, a laminate blade with ZDP 189 as the edge steel. Very light, very handy, looks good as well. I think this would make a great everyday carry if you want that three and a half inch blade length instead of the very popular three inch blade length. Now, as far as an everyday carry that's less than $100, I've said this before, but I still, I still think you can't beat these Buck knives. Uh, these are the Buck Pro Vantage and Buck uh, Pro Vantage Force. The only difference is that this is, this is the military version of this knife. All right, but these are basically the same knife, S30V steel. This one is slightly heavier and also a little bit more solid, solidly constructed, and as a stone wash. I just think anyone who wants to get into uh, EDC and doesn't want to go above 100 would be, would be very happy with these. All right, and I've added another blade into the mix. This is my choice for uh, a budget everyday carry, all right? This knife was $17, and it is the Bucklight Max Large folding knife. It's it's Bucks 420 HC steel. And yeah, for, for $17, um, I, I think it's one of the best in that budget price range. And hey, Buck, Buck really does well um, in the less than $100 category. I, I like these Buck folders quite a bit. Moving right along, this is my choice. My, Microtech SOCOM Elite. Um, this is my choice for a, a tactical folder, what, what is called tactical, which to me is about a four inch blade and is, is something that uh, a uniform professional might carry or um, a handgun carrier might carry as backup. That's kind of how I define it. And th there is no finer tactical, in my opinion. This is my ultimate recommendation as a tactical folder. It's not cheap, all right? Um, I'm assuming that if you legitimately need something like this, that you are willing to, to spend that extra, all right? Speaking of tactical, this is my Spyderco Civilian. It gets a very honorable mention. A lot of people have asked me, you know, is this really good? Is it really... You know, does it live up to the hype? Is it just a weird shape or does it work? Believe me, dude, you, you have no idea. Um, you, you would have to... You'd have to study a lot to really know what this thing could do uh, in the right hands. But, yeah, it, it, it does... It's not just all hype. Believe me. Or just believe your eyeballs. Use your common sense, dude. If, if you're in a dark alley and someone pulls this out, you're going to be, you're going to be, uh, you're gonna be making your peace. You know, you're, you're going to realize 
I wouldn't want to be anywhere near one of these if it was wielded in anger. All right, um, yeah, it's a fine, fine blade. All right, my next category is hard use folder. Now, I personally don't believe in prying, chopping, or batoning with a folder, all right? But if you do, or if you just want something overbuilt, uh, that's usually called a hard use folder. And uh, for a very reasonable price, I would recommend this Dendra Deer Hunter. A very nice knife uh, from, from a Russian company, but it's manufactured uh, in Italy. Excellent large overbuilt folder. All right, speaking of overbuilt folders, if you want something uh, e even less expensive, this is really the best and strongest heavy folder that I've found for uh, you know the, the lowest price. Uh, this is the it's the Mini Resurrection, also sold as the Resurrection Gen 2. It is a Boker. I got this from Knifeworks. I, I have no idea if they're still available, but it was around $50, $55, and came very sharp, and it, it is very solid and, and just heavily built. I mean, look, I think you can see, nice stone wash. Yes, this is the cheapest uh, functional overbuilt knife that I've found. And last in the overbuilt hard use category, the SR1A aluminum handle D2 blade. This is the orange and black, as you can see, the Halloween <laughs> SR1. If you're willing to go up a little in price, I'd, re I'd recommend an SR1. It is, it's an integral handle, meaning forged from one piece. And uh, it's extremely solid. The, the lockup is, is just, it's super rock solid. Extra wide blade design. And uh, yeah, if you're looking for an incredible looking knife and you want a, a large knife, uh, you're going to beat it up. Yeah, I mean, this is, this is excellent. And in my category of just large, extra large folders, um, you know, to me, a tactical folder is around four inches. So I have a, an extra category that's just the extra large stuff, like past four inches. And this XL Espada, um, I've done many demonstrations with this. It's just a, it, it's a fearsome blade. It's a pocket sword. And let's get into some fixed blades. Uh, my Martini, my Faithful Martini 571. Uh, just, uh, I mean, for $15, I, I haven't found any better Scandi. I do have many Mora knives, too, but um, this is actually a little bit thicker than your average uh, small Mora, so I like that better, and the edge is, the edge is cr crazy good Scandi edge. For $15, I mean, I don't think you can get better quality for, for that price. I think everyone should have one of these. Alright, as far as a mid-sized fixed blade, uh, for a budget price, uh, for $35, very difficult to beat this Ontario Pilot Survival Knife. You know, you see uh, mine is a little bit beat up because I've had it a while, and at this price, I mean, I'm not afraid to use it, use it and abuse it, and I mean, it, it's, it's a time-tested knife design. I just think it's a bargain for this price range. I mean, it's a brute. You can hammer, you can use this as a hammer. And, uh, yeah, I mean, I, I think everyone should have one of these too, just like everyone should have a K-Bar. I mean, at this price, no reason not to. All right, a little different. Best The best karambit. It, it's this uh, Fox... Fox Knives Karambit, the Cuckoo Hanuman. All right, they're fighting Karambit fixed blade. That is the maker mark of Richard Derespina, uh, who is the designer of this. And uh, to me, it's it's a uh, it's an ideal Karambit. Runs about one hundred and fifty-five dollars. You know, it's it, it's not cheap. It's not. People always ask, "What's a good Karambit?" Well, this is my answer. This is my pick. 
I think it has an ideal curve, great ergonomics, it'll do its job in either grip. So that's my pick, best karambit. All right, and if money is no object, or at least if you want a fixed blade, kind of a military type fixed blade that's in excess of $300, this is some of the best stuff I have. Uh, in the foreground, that is a Calico Forge Mark 45, uh, designed by a, uh, a paratrooper, a veteran, who, who then became a blacksmith and is, in, is now uh, you know, a knife maker and designer. That's actually forged by hand. All right, it is uh, 5160 carbon steel, tough as nails. It, it, it means business. Above that, that's the Strider uh, Chuck Mawinney, right? It's a 3V full tang uh, tribute, tribute to the K-Bar, right? And Chuck Mawinney is a renowned Marine sniper with uh, in excess of... Uh, well, let's just say he's accounted for many enemy. All right, here's the Mark 45. Check out the full review. This is nice. I mean, this is this, this is one of my best one of my best fixed blades. You can feel the weight on that. It, it's uh, like I said, designed by a paratrooper, and he knew what he was doing. And of course, the 3V. You know, the the K bar blade shape with a 3V super still a stronger tang alright favorite machetes we're gonna work our way up in price uh, starting at lower price the budget machete this cold steel jungle machete a great machete for twenty five dollars you know people always say oh I have a Brazilian one that was only six dollars I have those too, but they don't come with an edge. You have to grind your edge. You have to grind your own edge onto it. Uh, they don't even. They don't even have a bevel. It's just flat. So to me, you know, I, I can't recommend one of those unless every single person knows how to grind an edge on, which uh, probably most people don't. So as far as machetes that come with an edge, I, I'm going to recommend this as a budget option for an all-around machete. Why this one? You know, it's not too short, but it's not too long. And it's, it's not too light, but it's not too heavy. It's just a great little, it's a, it's a great multi-purpose blade. All right, it's, uh, you see it flares, so it is top heavy. So it'll hit fairly hard, but um, it's not too thick. So you can still swing it for a prolonged period of time. All right, it's not too thick or heavy. So yeah, it's, it's a little bit of everything, and so if you only could have one machete to, to do all kind of things, and you're on a budget, I think this is uh, the best $25 machete. All right, let's go up in price a little bit. All right, for a bit more, around $45, $50, you can get the Kershaw Camp 14. And I would definitely recommend this for that price range. It's a heavy machete. Um, that's how I categorize it. It's rigid. It's not, you can't bend it. Like you can, the cold steel, you can, you can flex it a little with your hands. You know what I mean? This is, uh, it's like a machete crossed with a large knife crossed with a short sword. And, uh, yeah, this is my pick for just a general all purpose, uh, nice moderate price, heavy machete. And one more machete. This is going to be, uh, I guess I would call it the ultra heavy, super hard use category uh, of machetes. All right, this is an Aranyak Thai Enep. Uh, unfortunately, I think these are pretty much sold out, but uh, just keep your eye out. You know, I'm hoping they get more in stock uh, by near Christmas. I'm just hoping. But yeah, if I had to choose something that was just going to take massive amounts of abuse, and dish out extreme uh, heavy chopping, this is what I would use. And it, it was only about $45. So a, a large size Thai Enep by Aranyak Convex Edge. I've seen these pounded through 
tree stumps and threw huge logs on their channel. All right, just the ultimate, the ultimate heavy use uh, chopping blade. All right, let's talk chopping tools, uh, axes, tomahawks, hatchets. First of all, I would recommend as an all-purpose tool this S-Wing Riggers axe, or sometimes it's called their Rig Builder Hatchet. You know, it's, it's just one solid piece of metal within a grip put on it. But this thing, I mean, S-Wing tools are tough as hell. I mean, you can see uh, the, pla the clear coat plasma coating has uh, worn off a little bit where I was chopping with it. But this will take some serious, this this will take some serious abuse. All right, but this is, you know, this is mainly a tool. I mean, it, it just looks like a tool. If you want something that looks more, oh, I don't know, just more like a tomahawk, more military-ish or SWAT team-ish, I would definitely recommend this Smith & Wesson tomahawk. Uh, it's, it's a little beat up if you saw my video. It is heavy. It's, it's much heavier than it might look in a picture. This thing is solid, a full tang. I mean, look how thick. Yeah, I mean, this, if you want a, a heavy duty breaching and rescue type tool, uh, look no further than this Smith and Wesson uh, tomahawk. It's their E and E tomahawk. All right, but now if you want a tomahawk that, um, that is not full tang, like maybe you want a more traditional, like top heavy balanced tomahawk, like, you know, without a full tang handle. I will recommend this cold steel trench hawk. Uh, you know, the handle polypropylene, right? And what does that do? Well, it means a lot more of the weight is toward the business end. So, you know, stronger, more efficient more efficient chopping for the weight. And people say, what about the SOG Hawk? What about the M48 Hawk? It's all about the steel, man. You know, I, I prefer carbon steel. This is, this is a carbon steel. Those other two popular Hawks are cheap stainless, so I, I would go with the cold steel trench Hawk. All right, and if money is no object, if you're going to go past $300 for a hawk, this is my only expensive hawk, so don't don't ask me, you know, about the RMJ hawk or the other hawks. I this is my most expensive hawk so far. This is what I know about. I've tested this. It's an ATC Comanche fighting tomahawk designed by a, it's a Seabert design. All right, it's, it's full tang. Those are G10 handle scales. And uh, this is a true fighting hawk. Uh, very rare to find uh, a well-designed and, and uh, specialized as a fighting design. That's pretty rare. The balance on this is freaking exquisite. And uh, yeah, I'd highly recommend it if you uh, want an expensive but very functional fighting hawk. All right, and last but not least, um, a, sh a short sword. I'm not going to do a longer sword in this video because there's no way it'll even close to fit on my table, but half of this will. All right, this is uh, Hanway Forge uh, Iga Ninja Toe. It's a straight sword. And, uh, well, let's see. Sorry, it can't fit in the it can't fit all in one shot. But I've done a demo with this. I've taken out, uh, killed a soda, soda bottle with a one-handed cut. It comes very sharp, and it it is very solid. I don't know if you can tell how thick it is, but it's it's more than a quarter inch thick at the spine. And also, what you can't tell the balance the balance on this blade. It, it is a extraordinary balance on this blade. I'll just say that. So if you need a short sword, yeah, I know it's not traditional. I never said that this was traditional. But uh, you need a nice anti-zombie short sword. Hanway Iga Ninjato. All right, YouTube. Well, 
my my voice my voice is getting a little hoarse from all this talking so i guess i've i've done my job and uh, done it hard and well but here's a group shot i really hope you enjoyed the video and this is going to be make a very nice thumbnail those are just my current picks you know it's it's not a full list obviously there's there's many many options especially in that edc category but i you know i had to pick something and i i thought uh, these picks would serve you well. All right. Hope you enjoyed the video. I'll catch you later.